Imagine trying to order the perfect pizza, but your instructions are vague and confusing. You'll probably end up with something unexpected. It's the same with AI. In Google AI Studio, your prompts are your instructions. Let's learn to speak AI fluently and get exactly what you're craving. Simply put, a prompt is a natural language request to an AI model. Once the model receives the prompt, it generates something based on it, so everything really hinges on the quality of your prompt. It's sort of like asking questions in your everyday life. How are you going to get the answers you want if you're asking the wrong questions? Prompt engineering is the process of repeatedly drafting and refining prompts and then assessing the model's responses. So what makes a good prompt? It's important to focus on two key aspects, content and structure. In regards to content, make sure your prompt includes all relevant information like clear instructions, context, and examples. And structure is basically organizing the information in a way the model can easily understand. You can use order, labels, and delimiters to achieve this. To illustrate this concept, let's check out an example. An unstructured prompt might be help university faculty and staff solve their technology issues by responding to their questions. To give this prompt more structure, provide context. You are an IT help desk technician at a university. Your daily job is to help faculty and students solve their technology issues. Then, provide more clarity around the task by including step-by-step -step instructions. 1. Identify what kind of equipment is encountering issues. 2. Identify the type of IT issue. 3. Determine the issue priority. P0, P1, P2, and so on. And finally, include a few examples, like existing help answers for how to reset a password or create a new account. Okay, so how does all this actually look like in Google AI Studio? Let's check it out. So we are in Google AI Studio. On the left side, there's an interface for writing prompts. On the right side, there are several configurable options. Now, you can go ahead and start typing in prompts, just like you can with Gemini, or you can provide some system instructions up front by clicking the icon in the toolbar. Referring to our previous example, this is where we could tell the model that they are a help desk technician at a university and that their daily job is to help faculty and students solve their technology issues. The more detailed the system instructions, the more accurate the model's response will be. If you're not sure where to start or need some inspiration, you can click the prompt gallery icon on the far right and choose from an option. And when crafting a prompt, you can upload files, record audio or video, and add YouTube videos and other media. Click Run to send your prompt to the model. For general purposes and multimodal use cases, the Gemini family is your best option, but there are specific models available for images, code, video processing, and more. Then, you can configure parameters like temperature and play around with tools like structured output, code execution, function calling, and grounding. Each model has different parameters and tools for you to experiment with. There are also some advanced settings which we'll briefly cover in this video, but won't go into too much detail. For more information on these settings, we've included links in the description. So how do these parameters actually work? Let's start with temperature. Temperature controls how random the generated output is. The lower the temperature, the more expected and less random the results will be. Low temperature are generally better for question answering and summarization where you want an expected answer. A high temperature setting expands the range of outputs and leads to less expected and more unusual results. This setting is useful for generating more creative content. Now, Gemini text responses are unstructured by default, but some applications require a more structured output. Maybe you're building a database of companies by pulling information out of newspaper articles or extracting ingredients from recipes and displaying a link 
to a grocery website for each ingredient. These are examples where a structured output is more valuable than unstructured. When structured output is enabled, the model responds with JSON, a structured data format that's suitable for automated processing. And you can get more specific and define what the output should look like by using a JSON schema. You can edit the schema visually within the interface, adding properties and defining their types. This ensures the model's output is consistent and easily parsable by your applications. Okay, now code execution is really a cool feature. You can generate and execute code directly within the environment. For tasks like data analysis, script generation, and code automation, this is a game changer. Think of it this way. Instead of just asking for information, you can ask Google AI Studio to do something with that information or even create something entirely new. For tasks like data analysis, you could prompt it to analyze the CSV data and show me the average sales per quarter. The model can then generate the Python code using libraries like Pandas, executed within the studio environment, and present to you with the results all without you having to write a single line of code yourself. Function calling lets you connect your language models with external systems and APIs, opening up a whole new world of possibilities. You define available functions for the model, and when a user's prompt requires external data or action, the model generates a structured function call. Your application then executes this real-world function feeds the result back to the model, and the LLM uses that information to generate a complete and helpful response. Finally, grounding links AI models to data sources like Google Search. This ensures that responses are checked against the most current information. Before wrapping up this video, let's explore advanced settings without going into too much detail. A stop sequence controls when the model should stop generating a response, you can also specify the length of the output. And top P and top K parameters control the sampling diversity of the model's output, which impacts its creativity and coherence. Now, the beauty of AI Studio is that it provides an environment for you to experiment with all these components. That way, you can see how they each impact the model's output. So, have fun experimenting. We'll catch you in the next video covering the multimodal capabilities of Google AI Studio.